The iPad OS 26 public beta is now out and everyone can go and check it out. And it's actually been a really long time since I've shown you what I've got on my iPad and how I've been using it. So in this video, I wanted to show you all of the apps and the home screens and the shortcuts and all of the accessories I've kind of been using lately and to have it all set up with this new iPad OS 26. And because this beta is now public, you can check it out if you want to. You just head over to your settings, go to general and then software update and you should be able to select it from there. It is still a beta though, so bear that in mind, it's not going to be perfect. Anyway, let's get straight into it. Let's talk about the new home and lock screens first. And iPadOS 26 does come with new lock screen customizations. I've actually kept mine pretty simple. I quite like this big new clock they've got on the go. And I actually don't use many of the widgets tool. I actually don't find them massively useful on my iPad. So I generally don't have those. If you do have a photo though, it does this kind of new thing where it turns it into like a 3D effect and you can move it around so it looks like like a 3D sort of photo. I'm sure some people will really like that, but I like to keep it super clean and I just go for the big new clock, which I really like. And this brings you to my home screen and you'll probably see straight off the bat, I don't have the new clear icons. Now you can get those by get, jumping up to edit, then hitting customize and then you can go down this route of having the clear icons and things like that. I tend to find I like need the colors to see where I'm going and all those sorts of things. I know that sounds a bit silly, but I get really kind of lost without them. So I just prefer to keep it on the default. So this is my home screen. Like I said, I keep all of the apps off the home screen now and I keep them all down in the dock. So it's a bit more like a Mac because that's how I'm using the iPad. Now I am using the new windowing system on here. So every time I open up an app, it opens up in its nice new little window, which I I really like and you can move these around and everything. I think Apple have done a pretty good job here but I will admit I am sad that Slideover has now disappeared. If you weren't sure what that was, Slideover used to let you kind of have some apps over here on the right and you could stack three of them. It was really good for like apps which were like a long list or for scrolling or things like that. So I am sad that's gone. A lot of people are disappointed that Split View's gone as well but you kind of do still get that. You can push apps over to either side and then you can rearrange them. It's not quite as user friendly as it used to be. You used to jump apps in and out of there really quickly, but uh, you can't do that anymore. But Split View is pretty much still here. The only thing I do kind of generally dislike is when you get a bunch of windows open, it kind of automatically hides and shows the dock. And on my Mac, I always have the dock just staying there and I kind of wish it did just stay there. So I have to constantly rearrange my apps so the dock doesn't disappear. But that's a real kind of nitpick complaint. Otherwise, I'm a big fan of what they've done with the windowing system. And I'm so much happier it's coming to loads more iPads as well. Even the mini's getting it now, which is kind of insane. So while this is pretty blank and I've just got the apps here, I do have a bit of a special trick on my iPad. I've had this set up for a while, but I've rejigged it. But here I've got a widget, which has got the weather. But if I swipe that up, I actually get access to this little shortcut menu. And this shortcut menu menu brings me into different modes on my iPad. So say if I want to do some gaming, I can press that and my iPad will jump into this gaming mode. That switches the wallpaper, it switches up where all of the apps are, and it gives me a bunch of widgets which are more kind of orientated at gaming and things like that. And then if I want to go home, I just press the home button on the same uh, little widget up here, and that brings me back to my home screen. I've also got the same thing for productivity as well. And this silences all of my notifications and gives me access to all of my productivity apps. The widgets are a bit more orientated for getting work done as well. So I've got uh, things like a Pomodoro timer, so I can just jump in and get some work done. I've got a lo-fi thing here which I can click and that brings me up to a bunch of kind of lo-fi music to enjoy and all those sorts of things. And yeah, it's just a nicer way to do it. Also, I've got the home button there and that always just brings me back to the home screen too. I find having those set up really useful when I just need to do something kind of specific on my iPad. And if you want to know how to set those up, I actually have a video on it. So if you want to build your own home screens and your own kind of focus modes, that video is a little bit old, but it still works. So I'll link it below. Oh, by the way, if you like this wallpaper, this is from a new set, which I've just released called the Cascade Pack. If you want to check it out, it's got a bunch of different colors. It looks really nice on your iPhone, iPad, desktop, Mac, PC, Windows, whatever. We'd spent a long time in Illustrator making it look great. So if you wanna check it out, I'll link it below. Before we talk about the app, so I wanted to thank the sponsor of this video, Paperlike. If you haven't heard of it, Paperlike is a screen protector for your iPad that makes it feel like you're writing or drawing on real premium paper, like a beautiful notebook. It uses their own NanoDots technology to add just the right amount of resistance to your Apple Pencil, giving you that tactile paper-like feedback whenever you're taking notes, painting digitally, or just doodling. It's super slim too, at under a millimeter thick, so it doesn't mess with screen clarity or responsiveness 
minimalness at all. In fact, it's one of the only few screen protectors that meet Apple's own design guidelines. Plus, it adds a matte finish without dulling the display, which others often do. You get two screen protectors in the pack, and it comes with a full application guide and video, so you can get it on perfectly. And honestly, Paperlike is the only screen protector for iPad that I genuinely recommend. So if you want to check it out, follow the link in the description below. Okay, let's talk about the apps that I'm basically using on my iPad pretty much every day. I've got the newest files app here, which is just really useful for everyday things. You don't need me to go too far into that one. And it's the same with Safari. Safari is just the browser of choice on iPad and iPhone just because it kind of works so well. I've seen some other people have some really good success with Firefox and with Arc browser. They look really cool, but I am just sticking with Safari at the moment. Photos app, you don't need me to explain, that just goes there. Lightroom is the app that I use basically for all of my photo editing. I absolutely love Lightroom and iPad. I've talked about it plenty of times, so I don't want to go too far into it, but it's just a really, really great way to edit photos and it just feels perfect with the Apple Pencil and like, actually moving photos around. A super quick example is a photo of me when we uh, did some photo shoots for these hats. And if I jump into here, I can just load into one of my presets and it just gives me a really nice kind of overall look, which I'm a big fan of. Um, let's do a very quick edit. So you can get something like this. Um, so there's my before and there's my after. And it's just so much fun to use on iPad. So yeah, I'm a huge fan of Lightroom. Always have been, love that thing. I'm also a big user of Craft nowadays as well. Craft is a writing app, which actually seems to really care about what device you're using. So if you've got it on your phone, it adapts to your phone really nicely. If you've got it on your iPad, it adapts to your iPad really nicely. And it actually just feels like it's been designed a lot better with, by people that actually like seem to really care about the experience and things like that, which I like. I was using Google Docs for a long time, but on iPhone and iPad, the apps were just not very good and the Craft app is just awesome. I'm also a huge fan of Freeform. This is one of Apple's apps, but one of the things that I use it for is kind of research. So at the moment, you know, when I started this year out, I had a big think about what I want to do on the channel and how I want to approach what I'm making. And I made loads of notes and I pushed loads of things around and just like took note of what everyone's doing and how I can apply it to my stuff. I also really like the fact that you can jump to uh, you know, different modes on it. So if I want to jump to stats, I can jump over here. And if I want to jump to similar creators that I really respect, then I can do that too. It's just a really good app. It's like a massive blackboard just to think on or whiteboard or whatever. Um, over here as well, I've got ChatGPT. I was a bit of an AI skeptic beforehand, but I'm actually using it a lot now. But one of the reasons I use it so much is because I am a solo creator. There's no one helping me make anything here. And one of the things I use it for is I like to upload my thumbnail kind of ideas to it and it will give me a bunch of kind of feedback on what's working and what's not working. Now it's not always worth it. Sometimes it just comes up with suggestions which are just no good but it's like having someone else in the office to kind of talk to and ask and it's kind of useful for that sort of thing it's also really good for uploading like contracts too and making sure that there's nothing in there which is like sinister or anything like that and it's also really helpful I've been trying to fix my PC at the moment and I've been using it for that rather than scouring YouTube so yeah I'm an AI skeptic no longer. I like it a lot. Microsoft To Do is the next one. That's my to-do list. I've used it for the longest time. Very simple, very basic, but I do love it for that. Good Notes is my note taker of choice. And this is where I use my Apple Pencil to just write down all notes. I think I'm on page uh, 343, and it's usually used for things like uh, notes when I'm making videos or for B-roll or things like that to get. Super, super useful. I've always liked Good Notes for the kind of tactile feeling it's got and the Apple Pencil use is just great. And they do a lot of good stuff. So yeah, big fan of Good Notes and that is my kind of go-to Apple Pencil note taker per se. WhatsApp finally came to iPad. That's a big deal here in the UK because we don't use iMessage or any other messaging app really. And the fact we now have got a native app for WhatsApp, so, so useful. I probably can't show you anything on there, but it's, a, it's just fantastic to get. So I'm really happy that that finally made its way over. Next up is Procreate, which is where a lot of our wallpapers actually start life. We've been experimenting a lot with kind of gradients and stuff lately, and it's just a really satisfying app to use. You can just, you know, kind of experiment on here and make things really nicely with the Apple Pencil. I genuinely think it's one of the best apps you can get on iPad, and if you have a pencil, it's absolutely worth experimenting with. And finally, I'm a Spotify user, so I have Spotify down here as well for all my music and things like that. I also have the downloads folder here too. You can move uh, files to kind of your dock now in a similar way to a Mac and that just opens up like that. So those are the apps which I kind of use on a daily basis on my home screen. If I do need any other apps, I just swipe down and type in what I'm looking for and then I can get to it pretty quickly that way. So that's how I access all of the apps that I need on my iPad.
Let's talk about some shortcuts I've got set up next because I actually really enjoy using shortcuts but I actually think it's quite a difficult app to get into. My first step is a new one. I take the Apple Pencil and if I squeeze that, it launches GoodNotes immediately, which is super useful if I'm picking up my iPad and when I write something down, I just pick up the pencil, squeeze it, GoodNotes is there and I can start writing straight away. I do wish it closed the app when I squeezed it. Again, that would be really useful. And the only unfortunate thing is you do lose access to the squeeze functions in other apps. So I'm kind of just messing around with that at the moment to make sure it sticks and it's worth using. Secondly, I do have some shortcuts which help me launch into apps. So if I jump back over to my productivity screen, I actually have two here. One's called research and one's called writing. If I tap research, it actually opens up all of the apps that I use on a daily basis. So I can just jump into them really quickly. I don't love how long it takes and where it kind of lays them out. You can select in the shortcuts app where you want those to go, um, but it's just not massively clear. So I think there's probably some work to do there on my end or on Apple's end. And the other one is called writing. This launches me into my two writing apps. So that brings up Freeform on this side and it also brings up Craft on this side. So I can just get to some writing. A lot of times I'll just dismiss the other one and I'll just, you know, write on the other. But yeah, super useful to just jump straight into those apps. I do have one more shortcut as well, which is called Ask ChatGPT. If I click that, it brings me directly into voice mode on ChatGPT and I can ask you anything. So ChatGPT, uh, how are you today? And what do you think about me making an iPad video? Hey there, I'm doing great. Thanks for asking. I think making an iPad video sounds like a fantastic idea. Those are the shortcuts I'm using. If you need a video on how to set some of those up, then maybe let me know or something like that. It's not too tricky, but I think the shortcuts app from Apple isn't massively intuitive on how to use. It took me a long time to figure those things out, even though they're actually relatively easy to sort. So yeah, let me know. Anyway, that's my kind of setup for the iPad. That's how I've been using it for the past kind of like two months or so, or since this beta has come out. And I've really been enjoying it. It's been a better way to kind of use my iPad and get the most out of it. The only thing I wish it did do is I do wish that I could change what's in the dock for when I go to portrait mode. Because when I go to portrait mode, it now is like feels way too busy down here. And like, I don't know, everything just feels kind of off. To be honest, I mainly use it in landscape, but yeah, I wish you could just kind of change the dock around a little bit more for that. Okay, to finish this video up, let's talk about some of the accessories which I do use on the iPad pretty much daily. And I have to admit, I did completely buckle and I ended up buying the Magic Keyboard for the iPad. Now, initially I was resistant to this because I didn't need the keyboard for what I was using the iPad for, which was a lot of pencil work and a lot of design work. But recently I've been going on so many train trips and longer journeys and I wanted to take my iPad with me and not my Mac. So I ended up getting the keyboard as well. So I could do some proper kind of script writing and things like that on the train. But I did get to go it in some nice stickers which I always love to do. Obviously the other thing that I'm always going to have with any iPad because I think it's the best thing you can get for it is the Apple Pencil Pro. Such a cool update with the squeeze and the barrel roll and things like that so I do really like the Apple Pencil Pro. You don't have to use it though you can get much cheaper alternatives that do basically like 80% of the job so don't feel like you have to buy that because you really don't. I also still have my iPad stand which I have next to my Mac which I use very occasionally but it does charge the iPad up which is really really nice. I also have this Anchor USB C adapter which plugs into the side, holds in nice and securely which I like and it also gives you access to loads of ports. So you've got your micro SD, your SD, headphone jack, you know everything you could possibly want including an HDMI which is really useful. It's really nicely made as well because a lot of those are a bit kind of cheap but this one from Anchor is really nice. And finally I don't have it on me at the moment but I've also been using a backbone as a controller for the gaming that I've been doing. I was finding taking around an Xbox controller or something like that with the iPad was just too much but that little backbone thing is pretty good for iPhone gaming and it also connects to Bluetooth to the iPad as well which is really useful. And that basically wraps up this video. That's all the apps and the shortcuts and kind of the home screen settings I'm using on my iPad at the moment and how much I'm enjoying iPadOS 26. I think it's really great. If you're on the public beta, let me know in the comments below and let me know if there's any other apps I should check out because I love finding new stuff and hearing from you. And as ever, I will see you all in the next one.